hope that you're ready. I hope that you're prepared. I hope that you embrace it. It's all yours. It's all yours in Jesus' name. As I first stated, I've been dealing with this series in, in, uh, entitled The Danger of Prophetic uh, Fiction. And uh, we, 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 we divided um, the series up in three parts. And we dealt with uh, the pur purpose, driven, pur purpose Driven Fighter. And so if you uh, want to catch up with us, uh, that uh, teaching is posted uh, on our Facebook page. And then secondly, uh, we, we, we uh, dealt with uh, personal fiction. And uh, I'm going to stay in that vein on today. And then lastly, we'll deal with prophetic fiction. Okay, so I want you to see this uh, because uh, in First Kings uh, 22, that's where uh, uh, we are in terms of our uh, scripture reference. And um, it's really dealing with uh, Jehoshaphat and um, King uh, Ahab, the king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat is the king of, um, of Judah. And so we know Ahab is just, he's an evil, wicked uh, individual, um, but he's in alliance with uh, uh, King Jehoshaphat, right? So the, the connection relationally is that um, King Jehoshaphat's son is married to uh, King Ahab. And so uh, King Ahab comes to this place where he feels like uh, that Ramoth Gilead belongs to him, but is in the power and the hands of, of King, um, the king of Syria. And so he wants to go, he wants to fight, and he asks uh, Jehoshaphat to go with him. He said, okay, I'll go. He said, but we have to inquire of the Lord. We have to get a word, confirmation. Before I fight, I need a word uh, from the Lord. And King Ahab, he brings 400 prophets, uh, his prophets. He brings 400 of his prophets. Uh, he gathered those prophets around him and asks, and should I fight? Should we go and fight? And the prophet says, yeah, go on up. Go ahead, go ahead. God's going to deliver it, deliver uh, the land into your hand. And Jehoshaphat said, oh, no, 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 no. Um, is there a prophet of the Lord? Because I, I get where you are in terms of the prophets that you uh, just um, got a word from. I get that. He said, but but is there a prophet from the Lord, of the Lord, still uh, available to us? And um, so Jehoshaphat was pretty much saying that maybe those prophets are called to you, but those prophets are not called to me. And there's a lot of them, 400 prophets. There's a lot of them. But, but if if you're not called to me, you're just crowding me. So he said, I need a prophet that's called to my life, not just crowding my life, right? So he says, he says, is there a prophet? He says, yes, one is one is Micaiah, but I hate him. That's what King Ahab said. He said, I hate him. And so the question is, why do you hate him, King Ahab? He said, because he he never prophesies good, he, he always prophesies evil. Well, that that's that's the that's really the, the content. Of who you are in, internally, you know he's he's a wicked individual, and Micaiah is pretty much calling him out characteristically, and he hates Micaiah uh, because of that. Because the thing is, if Micaiah does not prophesy about his good, and he prophesies about his evil, he hates Micaiah. As long as Micaiah prophesies regard prophesies according to his about you know about his good, he's he's all right. But as, as, but as soon as um, Micaiah calls him out and prophesies about his evil, he hates him. And you have to be careful because true prophets, um, they, they're not going to give you prophecy just about your good. They're going to give you some prophecy about your evil because it's that which they give you that represents uh, maybe some struggle that you may be uh, dealing with internally. That, that, that's, that that's not comparable uh, to the standards that God is holding you to as a child of God. You need to be challenged in that area. And you can't hate people who challenge you, right? You can't do that. But that's why he hated Micaiah, because Micaiah uh, wouldn't just give him prophecy about his good, but he gave him prophecy about his evil, right? So I want to show you another example of this, because in, in, um, if you would turn your, your, your attention to um, Acts uh, 7. I want you to look at the 56th verse real quick. 
I want you to see this because I want you to see where, where, where the Messiah, where Christ, where the Lord, the anointed, anointed one, Jesus, stands with this. Because the Bible says in Acts uh, 7, 56, which I'm reading out of the New King James, it says, it says, it says, and said, look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Now, you can read that, you can interpret that from a literal perspective, or you can look at it from a symbolic perspective, and I'm going to get back to that in a minute, right? So all this starts um, at the uh, pretty much at the 51st uh, verse. When he talks, this, this is Stephen, and he's talking to uh, the children of Israel, basically the descendants of the children of Israel, the Jews, and he says, you, 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 you know, you, you stiff-necked, you're stubborn, and un uncircumcised in heart. You see, the circumcision was just a sign of covenant with God. And so they had outside covenant, but inwardly there was no covenant, right? There was no agreement. That's what covenant means. So you, on the outside, you, you know, you, you, you look like you have covenant, but on the inside, you're not in agreement with God. And, and he said, you always resist the Holy Spirit, always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so did you. So this is Stephen calling out uh, the descendants, of, descendants of the children of Israel and historically, so historically, you've always been an issue. You've always been at odds. You've always resisted those who God has used through his spirit to bring about, to bring about truth, uh, whether it was the law, whether, it's, whether, it's, whether it was prophetically, whatever it is, you've always resisted the Holy Spirit, always. Your fathers did it, your fathers did it, and you're doing it as well. So we see this, we see this repeated um, uh, behavior uh, there's been, you know, obviously passed down from generation, 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 and here we are in the book of Acts, and this behavior is still repeating itself, right? So I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this because he said, he says, now, he says, and this is very important in 52, he said, which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? Here we go. Here we go. Now we're talking about the persecution of the prophets. We're talking about the persecution of prophets. And what Stephen is indicating is that even from a prophetic perspective, um, you've resisted what the prophets have provided you prophetically. Not, not even, you know, we're not even going to get to the, the patriarchal um, aspect of it, because when you talk about the patriarchal uh, aspect of it, you're talking about Abraham, Isaac, and, 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 and Jacob, who set a standard. Uh, that they were not adhering to. Even prophets came and spoke to them regarding uh, things that they should have received, not resisted, but they've always resisted it, right? Okay, so what, 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 what Stephen is doing, he's, he's providing some constructive scrutiny. I'm going to say that again, some constructive scrutiny, right? Because he's telling them, I'm calling you on this, he said, because even in, even from a prophetic perspective, in 52, he says, you persecuted the prophets. And, and the Bible, and, and the text says in 52, and they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers. Do you see what I'm saying? So, so when, 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 when you talk about the prophet, prophets of old, they, 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 they went through persecution. They, they, they were murdered. They, they, they were maliciously dealt with because of what was spoken through them to challenge, to challenge uh, those who were resisting uh, what they should have received based on what God was trying to reveal, reveal to them, which represented his truth, but they showed resistance, right? So this is, this is Stephen giving them constructive scrutiny. He said, you kill, you killed the prophets, okay? All those who foretold, when you foretell something, you're prophesying, okay, of the coming of the just one, the Messiah, okay? Not only did you kill prophets, but you killed the Prince of Peace. You, you killed the one that they prophesied uh, about, talking about really the murder of Jesus Christ, which we call the crucifixion, but it was really a murder. They murdered our Lord and our Savior Jesus, our Savior Jesus Christ, right? Right? So he put that charge, he charged them with betraying him and murdering him. Right? Okay? And he says, he says, it should not have happened because you receive the law. You know better. 
You received the law, 53, by the direction of angels and have not kept it, right? So what he's saying is, what he's saying is, he says, Moses, which was the angel, the, the angel over the house of Israel pastorally, pretty much gave you the law gave you the right and the wrong as to what you need to what you needed to be knowledgeable knowledgeable of but you never kept it you, you never did it you, you you didn't do what was right even when you knew what was right you 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 knew what was wrong but you never acknowledged or you never exuded any effort to res, to resist doing what was wrong so you had you had the law. You knew what was right. You knew what was wrong. Prophetically, you know, truth was provided for you. You killed those who who uh, provided uh, that 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 prophecy for you as it relates to um, the messiahship of Jesus Christ. You resisted it, right? And the Bible says, when they heard, when they heard these things, they took it personally. They didn't receive it. They took it personally in 54, and when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed at him with their teeth. Do you see? So this is why correction is something that a lot of leaders are reluctant, reluctant to exude uh, amongst people who do not receive uh, the truth concerning the, 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 the things that need to be corrected within themselves so 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 it won't just be an outward show of who you are from a, a, a christian perspective but inwardly uh there needs to be some correction uh, but when 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 there is uh, some attempt to provide correction in a lot of cases the the backlash is very very severe and I'm, this is why I'm bringing this to the body of Christ, is that we are we, we, we have to understand the, the purpose as to how God used prophets, how he used pastors, but specifically prophets in this, in this, in this context. It's not just to prophesy about good, you're gonna get a house, you're gonna get a car, all, all that is fine. That's fine. But 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 I, I I need somebody to speak to what correction I need on the inside, and I need to receive it. I need to receive it, not resist it. Resist it because I don't care uh, how how much you gain. I don't care how much you gain, how much increase you gain from a materialistic perspective. All that is fine, but but if if you're not becoming better, okay, as a child of God, okay, or man or woman of God, then none of that means anything, right? But you see the historical resistance to correction right here in the text in in Acts, right? But look at Stephen. I want you to see Stephen because basically what they did to the prophets and when they brought about prophecy that didn't really speak to their good, but it spoke to their evil. I want you to see what happened uh, with, with, with Stephen and his determination uh, to sustain uh, his uh, scrutiny of their behavior towards prophecy concerning the just one who is Jesus Christ. 55 said, but he being feet full of the Holy Spirit gazed into heaven. I want you to see this. He gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. In the midst of the backlash, he looked up. He didn't look, he didn't look to them. He wasn't intimidated. He wasn't scared. He didn't back up, but he looked to the heavenlies and saw the glory of God in the midst of what he was going through, just trying to be true to the assignment that God put on, put attached to his life uh, for the betterment of the people that he were ta was talking to. He saw the glory of God and Jesus, watch this, standing at the right hand of of God. Now, when we talk about Jesus' posture, typically we talk about how he sits at the right hand. But this morning, I want to show you, uh, it show you Jesus' posture as it relates to him observing, observing Stephen's attempt uh, to bring about uh, some type of awareness. Uh, to the people that he's speaking to regarding their uh, historical resistance, 
uh, prophetically, pastorally, uh, to the truth of who uh, the, the, the chosen one was, the Messiah was, Jesus stood up. That was his posture. He stood up. He, st he wasn't sitting when, he, when Stephen looked. He was standing up, right? So we see this from a, a, a Christological perspective. We see a Christological stand. OK, we see we see we see we see Christ standing while Steve is being Stephen is being stoned. Christ is standing at the right hand of God. And this is what I want you to see. And I got to close. He says, look, I see the heavens open and the son of man standing at the right hand of of God. Now he goes through, watch this, he goes through constructive scrutiny. Now we see a Christological stand, Christ standing, standing. I want to give you two points. First of all, as it relates to the constructive scrutiny, you have to voice the need for the accountability of wrongdoing. All Stephen was doing, he was vo voicing the account, the need for the accountability of wrongdoing. When you're wrong, you need to be told you're wrong. You need to be accountable for your wrong. And he deals with that from a historical perspective. But when he sees Christ standing, when he sees Christ standing, I want you to see this. I, I, I want you to get this principle because when you stand for him, he will stand up for you. I'm going to say that again. When you stand up for him, he will stand up for you. Here is Stephen standing up for the legitimacy of the messiahship associated with Jesus. And he's taking a stand, letting them know this was something that was prophesied long, a long time ago, but you resisted it. And here you are right now, instead of receiving him, you killed him. You murdered him. You betrayed him. But but I saw him. I while, listen, while they were gnashing their teeth and while he was receiving the backlash, he looked up and, and, and heaven gave him something to see. Heaven gave him something to see. Heaven opened up and he saw the Messiah, the Messiah, the one he was standing up for was standing up for him. And I want you to know when you stand up for Jesus, he will stand up for you. I don't care about the backlash. I don't care about the gnashing of the teeth. I don't care about the rejection, the resistance. Listen, you have to learn how to take a stand. You have to learn how to take a stand for what you know to be true, what you know to be right, what you know to be just. And you have to know you can't worry about the hell you're getting on earth. You have to, you have to make sure that you're getting approval from the heavenlies. And when Stephen looked up, Christ was standing up for him because Stephen was standing up for Christ. All right. And, and this is the thing that when they then in 57, it said they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. Look at this. Ran with him with one accord. They said, I don't want to hear it. Cried out with a loud voice. They didn't want to hear it. Ran with ran at him with one accord. And watch this. And they cast him out of the city, stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul who would go on to be Paul, right? I want you to hear this. They stoned him. He went from constructive scrutiny to Christological, to seeing a Christological stand, and now he's dealing with the catastrophic stoning. A stoning. A stoning. But I want to give you your point three. Stand even when you're being stoned. Stand even when you're being stoned. While they are stoning, keep standing. And it may be a metaphor because we have freedoms uh, that uh, Stephen didn't have back in the day. But you're going to be stoned verbally. You're going to be stoned opposition-wise. But keep standing even when you're being stoned because you have to hear this. You have to hear this. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Before he left, he said, then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And he had said this. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. I just need you to see this. My time is really up. Do you understand what you go through when you declare the truth of God's word to people who resist it. And I want you to see what, what, what 
uh, Stephen laid out for us as relates to what the prophets went through uh, during their, their days, during, during their, that era. They were killed. Stephen was stoned. They did to Stephen the same thing they did to the prophets because they did not want to hear it. But when he looked up and the heavens opened, the person he was standing up for was standing up for him. And this is the kind of courage that you have to have in this season. You have to take a stand for what you know is right. You have to take a stand for what you know is holy. And you cannot worry about the backlash because it's going to come. Historically, it came. It came. It came against the prophets. It came, it, it came against Stephen. And it's going to come against us. But you have to know that somebody is in the heavenlies, not sitting, but standing up for you because you are standing up for him. And I'm asking everybody that's listening to me on this morning, take a stand. Take a stand for what's righteous. Take a stand for what's holy. Take a stand for what's biblical. Take a stand for what's right. And yeah, you're going to get some backlash. Yes, you're going to get some opposition, but you got to learn how to stand even when you're being stoned. And then forgive those who are stoning you because they're they don't have the, the, the intelligence to be able to operate in a way to receive what you're saying. They resist it. I got to go. YCB, I love you. If you have any issues, call right now, 301-200-1615. We have somewhere there to pray for you in Jesus' name. God bless. All right. So so I, I, want, I want you to get this. Please get this. Please get this. Please get this. At the end of of Stephen's life, he wanted those that he were that he was ministering to or holding accountable, right? Holding accountable for the historical wrongdoing. At the end of the day, he tells tells Jesus, he says, "Please don't lay this sin to their charge. They're wrong, but don't charge them for it. Don't charge them for it." And I want to thank God. I didn't get to say why tell why he be this. But I'm going to tell you this. I want to thank God for the sin, the sins that he didn't charge me for. I wish I had six people. I want to stop right there because I, I see myself. I see myself. I mean, at, at one point in my life when I resisted truth, when I didn't receive even truth for, truth about myself, and I want to thank God for the people who took a stand, even when I didn't, re even when I didn't receive it, even when I didn't want to hear it. But they kept standing for what was right, holding me accountable. And even when I resisted it, they kept on, kept on speaking truth. And I thank God that even in my ignorance, even when I didn't want to hear it, even when I was stubborn, because all of us may go through that. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I thank God that he did not charge me for the things that I've done, that if he would have charged me, if he would have charged me for my wrongdoing, I, I, don't, I don't know if I would be here today. I want to talk to about four people who know if he would have, really would have charged you for your wrongdoing. I'm talking about even now. If mercy don't step up, if grace doesn't step up, if, 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 I'm telling you, if his forgiveness does not intercede, even now, I don't know who could stand. I don't know. So this is the thing, that same forgiveness that God has given us, we have to show it and give it to others. Because right now they may be in a place of resistance. They may be in a place of opposition. I'm trying to tell you, the, the, this, the, I'm trying to give you an example of what true prophets went through based on them just trying to declare the truth of God's word for their spirit, for, for, for uh, the, the people that they were talking to. They were just declaring it for their spiritual betterment and improvement. But they were killed. Jesus came doing the same thing, murder, kill. And so you know what the prophets went through it. And you know if, if, if Jesus went through it, we're going to go through it. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to go through that. But you got to take a stand. 
and not back down based on the, the negative reaction of people because you have to know if nobody is standing up for you, you got someone seated at the right hand of God that is standing up for you because you're standing up for him. You see? So, so, so in, in conclusion, I, and I want to I want to make sure that I give you I give you a balanced I think interpretation of of my 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 uh, teaching this morning is that now I understand that there will be resistance and I know that I haven't been innocent all my life of this particular charge but I want to say it real 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 clear I want to say it clear that I thank you I thank you that he did not charge me for the, all the sins that I have committed, especially in terms of not acknowledging him with my heart, not just with my voice, but with my heart. See, that was the issue with Stephen. He said, you have an uncircumcised heart. You're not in agreement uh, with who he is and, 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 and his, his true identity. In your heart, you have resisted that. Even with the help of the Holy Spirit, even with the help of prophets, you killed them. You killed everybody who tried to tell you the truth. You see? So even when I found myself in that position, position God did not lay that sin, lay, that, lay, lay a charge or charge me for that sin. And listen, I know we can thank God for a whole lot of things, but I thank him for his mercy, his grace, and his forgiveness. So remember now, as you go forward today, you have to understand that as you take a stand for what's right, as you take a stand for what's righteous, as you take a stand uh, for what's holy, you're going to get some backlash. OK, but remember yourself. Remember yourself. Remember that we were we were not perfect. We, we, we cannot uh, claim that we never found ourselves doing the same thing. So when you get this backlash this, and, you, and, you, and you get this persecution, you get this opposition, don't take it personal. Remember what God did for you, do it for somebody else. And that's what I'm pretty much asking you to do. Stand even when you're being stoned. All right. Be a voice. First of all, be a voice. Be a voice. Voice the need for the accountability of wrongdoing. That's what Stephen was doing. Right. Know when you stand up for God, he'll stand up for you. And then stand even when you're being stoned. And then remember, whatever backlash you get, are you with me? Remember, it was God that forgave you. He forgave you. So do, do for people what God has done for you. Forgive them. Forgive them. Before Stephen died, before he took his last breath, he said, don't lay this sin to their charge. Don't charge him for this. Meaning he was a true prophet of God. And even though they took it personal, he didn't. Because he's more concerned about their souls, not their behavior. All right? So I love you, and I thank God for you. I'm, I'm really trying to educate you um, as much as I can relative to what we need in the season. And before I go, pray for prophets. Pray for real prophets and prophetesses, please pray for them. Pray for them, the real ones, because they are going, they, they are going when they declare the truth of God's word, uh, the, the enemy attacks, I mean, them on a, a, another level because we need to hear what's coming out of their mouths for our, um, our personal betterment. You see what I'm saying? And so the, the, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Anything that you begin to speak prophetically, even pray for yourself, because whenever you begin to foretell what you feel God's going to do, despite what's going on right now, oh, the enemy's going to come against that because he resists it. He, he doesn't want that to take place. No, no, no. He doesn't want that to take place. So, you know, you don't have to be, um, you don't have to operate in the office of the prophetic. You can begin to prophesy over your life about what you believe is going to happen, you know, in the future versus that, that they're really... Um, runs contrary to what you are experiencing right now. So when you start operating the prophetic, just know there's going to be some attacks. 
And some of you can't, 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 and I'm, I'm being led to say this. I'm being, let me say this real quickly. Some of you can't understand the attack that's on your life is because of how prophetic you are over your life. Now, you don't, pro prophets are wonderful. Whether they male or female, they're wonderful. I love them. I love true prophets and prophetesses. Love them. But when you begin to prophesy over yourself, that, that, that does not exempt you from prophesying over yourself. So remember, when you start prophesying over yourself, you start foretelling yourself what will be based on what is, attacks are going to come. And you're trying to figure out where are these attacks coming? Where are these attacks coming from? Where are these attacks? They are coming because you are being prophetic. Whenever you operate in the prophetic, attacks are going to come. They're going to come gnashing at the teeth and people don't want to hear it. I wish I had time to really talk to you. Especially when you start talking about what shall be versus what is, and people don't believe, they don't want to hear it. They, they, you know, all, all types of attacks come. I'm trying to tell you, okay? But you have to be able to stand up for what you believe God's going to do for you, even when you're being stoned, right? Even when you're being persecuted, even when people come against you, keep operating in that prophetic uh, space about what you know God's going to do and he's going to bring you out. I mean, if you're sick, start claiming your healing. But just know there's going to be some attack, some attack. But but you don't look at the attack. You know what Stephen did when he was attacked? He looked up. The heavens open up. If you want to open up heaven, if you want the heavens to open up, God help me. I, let me get on off of this. Some of you are getting ready to open up the heavens. Some, the heavens are getting ready to open up for somebody this morning. I just heard that in my spirit. He said, "If you, if you, if you stop looking at, if you stop looking at the, the, your opposition, and look up to who, as it relates to who's for you, God said, I'm gonna open up the heavens, and you're gonna see it before you get there." I don't have six people. I'm a, he said, "I'm gonna open up the heavens and let you see that you got somebody up here that's standing up for you because you're standing up for him." Are you with me? Okay. So, so I'm, you know, so that's why so much is coming against you is because you know how to be, uh, you know how to operate in that prophetic space over your life when it comes to your life, you know. So thank God for the prophets and, the, and things of that nature, male, female. But you have to remember that you, 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 um, in your own right, know how to be prophetic when it comes to the things that you say out of your mouth, speak, speaking those things that be not as though they were. The enemy cannot stand, stand a prophetic voice. Can't stand it. You see? But the problem is he can't stop it. He can't stop it. And don't let him stop you. You see? So Stephen said, I'd rather die going to be with the Lord than to be here and utter something that I know will not be in the best interest of the people that I'm called to. Right? And so Jesus didn't stop the, the stoning. He just opened up the heavens and received the spirit. Stephen says, just receive my spirit. I'm, I, my assignment is done. I'd rather come on home than to operate in, in, in a posture prophetically that's not um, authentic and genuine when it comes to my assignment assignment towards the people that you've called me to. All right? So, so remain prophetic despite the attacks because if god said it it will come to pass all right enjoy your day um looks like it's going to be a hot day so stay hydrated and um lord willing i'll uh speak with speak with you tomorrow Keep, get your mask have your mask have your sanit uh, um, sanitizer all of those type of things please 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 and um and listen to um Fauci, I told you, Fauci is the uh, the bishop. He's the presiding bishop over COVID-19. And so uh, that's where I take my cue from him and God. If you listen to him, you won't go wrong. I think God is speaking through him prophetically in Jesus' name. All right. I talk to you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Lord's willing, enjoy your day. God bless. Oh, may the Lord keep you and yours is my prayer.